What's going on everybody? So today I am going to be bringing you a steering wheel update and this is something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time but it's taken me some time to get to it and for good reason. This isn't the easiest thing to implement to the point where it's mostly plug and play and it's as, as you know seamless as possible. So without further ado, let me just get into it because this might be a long video. Um, and there's a few things I wanna mention off the bat. Um, First of all, you want to make sure that you get a Logitech G29 steering wheel. So don't expect to get any old steering wheel and just plug it in and I'll be able to follow along with this video because that's not going to work. The configuration for this is very involved and um, the, the Logitech G29 is the one I chose. It's a very nice steering wheel and uh, it's not the cheapest but it's not the most expensive it's a nice middle ground there and it's a really quality you know good quality steering wheel so um, that's the reason i chose this one so you must use the g29 from logic tech if you want it to be as plug and play as possible otherwise i mean you would have to just do everything from scratch basically so um, with that said the first thing you're going to want to do when you uh plug in the steering wheel okay is before you even plug it in make sure that on the top of the steering wheel so if we take a look at this picture here it would be over here where where the mouse is up there you're going to see there's a switch and you want to make sure that it's over to the left to where it says ps3 as in playstation 3 okay because playstation 3 is the setting that works with windows so don't put it up on ps4 to the right make sure it's to the left Okay, so once you do that and you plug in the steering wheel for the first time, you're gonna see that it starts to spin and that just means it's calibrating. So basically it's gonna spin and it's gonna spin one way and then the other and it's gonna stop. Okay, that's good. And then after that, you're gonna wanna go into toolkit. Once you go into the toolkit, you're gonna see this option here, start driving. So pretty straightforward, right? So what you wanna do is select that so hit enter on start driving and just give it some time you're going to see this pops up it might not pop up as quickly as that because i already had it open but that's going to pop up and just wait it out until it closes so we're waiting we're waiting when that happens uh it's not going to do it on mine because i've already plugged this in and i've already started that prior to starting the video but for you that's going to pop up and then the steering wheel is going to turn again to each side, left and right, and then you're gonna get a pop-up that asks you to restart the machine. You're gonna go ahead and do that, and then once the machine is back up, you're gonna hear it rotate like maybe two more times as the machine is booting. Then once the machine starts up again, you're gonna land here, and you're gonna go back into toolkit again, and you're gonna do start driving again. And once again, you're gonna wait for that uh, software there, the Logitech gaming software, to disappear. At that point, you're ready to go. Your steering wheel is gonna work. It's also gonna work to navigate the menu. So if you go back to this screen, it's basically gonna mimic what you see here. Now, obviously those are for the Xbox controller, but the buttons on the steering wheel itself is pretty much the same thing you've got the d-pad you've got these four buttons just like you do on the xbox controller and you've got your top buttons here so most functions here are going to work the same way so that way you'll know how to navigate with the wheel now the start and uh and, and back button on the xbox controller correspond to the option and share. So option here, that's the equivalent of start or select, and share is the equivalent of back. So if you're familiar with my systems, you know that to exit things, you normally press, you hold back and you press start at the same time. Well, same idea here, you would hold share and press option. That's how you get you know, out of uh, games, that's how you exit a game. To select the game, you know, same thing as over here, the A button over here is select, the X button over here is select. So I think you get the point by now. The O button here is to exit and the B button there is to exit. So you see they're in the same location. All right, so that's that. Now, 
everything we just did or I instructed you to do as far as plugging it in and waiting for the machine to reboot and all that stuff, that's going to be the first time you plug it in. Now, going forward, once you do that initial setup, you won't obviously have to do that every time. What you do have to do every time is you have to come to the toolkit and you do have to hit start driving. That's going to be every time you want to use the steering wheel. Now, if the machine is up and running, you do this, you know, you turn it on, um, you come here and you do this, you step away, you know, you don't have to do it again when you come back to the machine to play. This is only if you shut down the machine. So if you leave it on two, three days, whatever, it's going to work every time you come back to it. But if you shut it down, it kind of resets everything. So you just come here and do it. So basically, you don't want to leave the steering wheel plugged in when you're not using it. All right. So if you're going to go play uh, regular games, leave it unplugged. If you're going to play driving games, this is this is how you do it. You come, you plug it in. You're going to see that it starts to spin. Then you come here and you go to start driving, it's going to start to spin again. You know, that software is going to pop up. You wait for it to go away. Now you're ready to go. That's the only thing you have to do every time after a reboot when you when you want to start playing games. And again, remember to leave it unplugged if you're not using it because it could, it could cause issues with other games. Okay, so another thing I want to point out is when you boot up the machine before you do the start driving in the toolkit, the buttons on the steering wheel may or may not work. It's inconsistent, but once you do it from, once you do start driving from the toolkit, everything fixes itself. Also, note that when you start certain games from certain systems, there might be a little bit of a, of a load time. Just give it time, don't get impatient. You know, an example of that is anything with Naomi or a Thomas Wave, so like 18 truck wheeler or anything like that. Uh, that might take a little bit longer. MAME always takes long the first time uh, you load a game, but then after that it's quick or quicker. Um, but yes, yeah, some systems like Naomi, they'll look like they might be hanging because the percentage will be at 100% and, and it'll still be there for a little bit, but that's totally normal, all right? It's it's some stuff going on behind the scenes that you, know, that you don't really need to know about. Okay, and then also, and I'm just gonna go through a few bullet points here, guys, so bear with me, but these are important things that you should keep in mind. Um, so another thing to know is that when you're making selections in different games, you know, you're going through the menu, selecting the car, selecting the, you know, if it's automatic or, or manual, stuff like that. You know, every game is different. So some games, you or most driving games, you do it with the gas pedal, right? You do the steering wheel left or right, and then you select things with the gas pedal. Well, not all of them are like that. Some of them you have to press the start menu to make the selection. And again, the start menu would be the option button right here. So just keep that in mind. Also, sometimes I use the clutch pedal uh, to perform certain actions that are not, you know, related to really the clutch. Uh, it's just kind of a handy way to uh, to get some of the other actions in there. So, for example, some games I'll use it for like a rear brake, being that it's next to the actual brake. And for some other games, like maybe a, a wave runner game or something like that, I'll use it for like roller pitch. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. Another thing to note is that not all games support force feedback and pretty much all MAME games do not, unfortunately, and that's going to be the bulk of the games. But the good news is that Sega Model 2 and Sega Model 3, most games do support it and there are some really cool games in there like Daytona USA. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some actual games here. And I'm going to show you guys a few tricks that are going to make your life easier. So here is the new menu. There's a dedicated menu for driving games. It's right under gun games right here. Now, while I go in here, let me remind you guys that you don't want to start the games from MAME because they're not going to go be routed through the proper channels for everything to work correctly with the steering wheel. So ignore starting the games from MAME directly. You want to start everything from the drive racing games menu. Um, this goes for any other system as well that you're going to see in here. This is basically a few of the systems that have driving games consolidated into one menu. So uh, one way you know you'll know which 
system a game is for is like this. So let's say you start a, a game, right? The loading screen is going to tell you what system it's for. Now, this one says racing games, and you see that arcade machine in the background. That's MAME, okay? So just keep in mind that when you see that loading screen on any game that you start, that's a MAME game. Now, it looks like this because I don't have it set to uh, full screen right now while making this video so that I can kind of flip back and forth between things and show you guys. But, you know, yours will obviously be full screen. Now, as I was saying, anything that has that loading screen will be a MAME game. Now, let me show you what it looks like if it's from another system. Okay, so 18-wheeler is a Sega Naomi game. And you're going to see that there's a Naomi uh, loading screen. So that's how you can tell what system each game is for. And that's important to know so that you know whether this stuff that I'm about to show you is uh, it only applies to MAME. So you'll know if you're trying to do it on a game that is not MAME, you'll know that you it's not going to work for those games. So with that said, let's go back here to this game. Now this is a MAME game. We're going to start it up. Again, it's not full screen because I have it like that for this video, but yours will be full screen. So basically, what I want to show you guys is how to figure out what I configure the controls to be for each game. Now, you can obviously start up a game and go in there and just kind of start pressing buttons to figure out what, all, what they all do, but I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. So... If we use this game as an example, this is not a very good one to use, but I'm going to show you something that's different on this one. So if we go to the tab menu and put this machine, you can see, you know, all of the inputs for this game, right? And this one's pretty simple. You only need to worry about player one. So only these here, you can see that player one up and down are set to none. So that's because those inputs aren't used. Um, left and right would obviously be steering wheel left and right. And player one and uh, player one button one, player one button two. Uh, player one button one usually is gas, but in this game is actually reversed. But the only thing you need to know here is that this one doesn't use conventional inputs. So you see like joy one left, right, joy one down and up. Normally they won't be like that. Uh, but if you look at the diagram, you can still figure out what's what. So if you look at the player, if you look at the at the gas pedals over there on the right, um, you can see the, the uh, brake pedal is joy one accelerator plus or joy one down right so if you look here joy one down that's player one button one is joy one down so that's your break uh player one button two is joy one up joy one up so if you look at the gas there is joy one up so now you know that's gas and obviously left and right are the steering wheel all right let's show you a more complicated game okay here's another one All right, if we go to the tab menu, input this machine. All right, you can see shift down is joy one button five or joy one button 14. So if you look here, you can see that joy one button five is the left paddle shifter, right? Because you're shifting gears. So it's the left paddle shifter, which is joy one button five. There it is. Or joy one button 14, which if you look on the right there in the shifter, it is the you know, up position on the center there. So you're shifting uh, down, you, you, you move the, uh, the shifter forward uh, in its center position. Um, then shift up is joy one button four, which is that right paddle shifter there, or joy one button 15, which is again the shifter, and you move it down in its center position. Now, with that said, keep in mind that some games use either or, the paddles or the shifter itself. Some games use only the shifters. Some games use only the paddle. And that you have to kind of like play with and figure out. That's on a per game basis. Okay, so moving on here, you have view changes, joy one button three. So you can see that joy one button three is that uh, triangle right there. And motion stop is joy one button zero, which would be the X button. And steering wheel analog is joy one wheel axis which is just you know your whole steering wheel left or right and there it is showing on the top there you always want to ignore steering wheel analog declining analog inclining anything that says declining or inclining you ignore that's why they're set to none you only concern yourself with this gas pedal is joy one accelerator minus and it, that is reflected on this diagram here 
And again, you ignore declining and climbing. Brake pedal is Joy One Accelerator Plus, which is again shown here. Now, really quickly, let me show you guys how these two work because these are a little bit tricky. Now, with these, let's say you wanted to configure this for whatever reason, you're not going to need to because gas is gas and brake is brake, right? But just so you know how it works, if you press enter on this input and you step on the gas pedal, you're going to see that the first time it comes up as just Joy One Accelerator. Now, if you press enter and you step on it again, it comes up as plus. And if you press enter and step on it again, it comes up as minus. So you pretty much always want the gas pedal to be Joy One Accelerator minus as you see on this diagram so you as you saw there i just had to press it the first time then again then again until i got joy one accelerator minus same thing for the for the brake pedal you would uh hit enter press the brake pedal now i know it's weird because it says accelerator but that's just how it is you press enter again and now it says plus so as long as brake pedal is set to joy one accelerator plus that is going to function properly Okay, so now that you guys see how you can figure out which, uh, you know, what the inputs are assigned to just by looking at this and comparing that to the diagram here, um, you can also come in here and, and tweak things to your liking if you wish. Everything's configured, but if you want to tweak things, you can come here and do it. And, you know, just like I did right there, you just press enter on the input and then you press whatever button you want to configure that to. Obviously, in this case, that's pretty set because gas and you know and brake, you want it to be your, your pedals. But up here, you can change these to whatever you want. Um, the only thing to know is that before doing that, you have to go out to Windows and you have to make a change. So let me show you that now. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go back out to Hyperspin and you, you want to go to the toolkit and you want to go to Exit to Windows. Okay, you're not going to have any other stuff here. That's just there because, you know, I'm recording this video. So you would go to these to this yellow folder next to the start menu. And then you would go over to emulators. You would look for MAME driving games. Now, there's a few here, so you're just concerned with MAME driving games. And then this CFG folder here, that's where all the configurations are saved. So if you go in there right now, the way I ship the system, and you right-click on one of these, you're going to see that it's set to read only. So if you go over there to a game in the, in the input selection, you know, screen that we were just at where you can configure the controls, you go in there and you change things without coming out here first and changing that read only right there, it's not going to save because these are locked down as read only. So they're going to work for the duration of that game. But as soon as you quit and try to play again, those settings are going to be lost. So you always want to come out here first if you're going to be tweaking settings. That's the only reason you want to come out here. Um, and you want to go to the main folder right here, right click it, properties, and make sure that you remove that right there. Hit apply, hit OK, hit OK again. And now if you check any of these files by right clicking on them, they're not read only anymore. So now if you go back over there to MAME, you go into that input configuration, you change things around it's all going to be saved properly. And you always want to come back out here after you're done making changes and you want to right click on this, go to properties. And that's going to look like it's checked off, but it's not. You want to click on it, click on it again. Now it's checked off. Hit apply, hit OK, hit OK. And if you go and check one of the files now, it's back to read only. All right. So again, you only want to do that if you're going to be making changes, which you shouldn't really need to do. Now you can always also back up this entire directory. So if you, you know, right click and copy, and then you right click over here and you paste, you'll have a CFG copy. So if you make any changes and you kind of get lost and you screw some things up, you don't like the way it turned out, you can always delete this folder completely and then just come to the CFG here that you made a copy of, you know, get rid of the copy portion of it, hit enter, and now you'll have a complete you know, you'll be back to the start. So you have everything back to the way I shipped it. And guys, finally, I'm just going to show you here real quick. There's three ways you can go about kind of adjusting the sensitivity to the pedals and the steering wheel. So the uh, first one is on the desktop. There's a shortcut to set up USB game controllers. That's just Windows. You can go in here, properties, 
and you can go to the settings tab and calibrate and you know it's going to ask you to step on the gas pedals and and turn the wheel left and right you know that's a good one to do um, if you're having some issues that just calibrates the steering wheel in windows and then there's two more ways one is the logitech gaming software you're going to have a shortcut on your desktop that says ogs and has this icon if you go in there you know it's the same software we start from the toolkit so if you click on the steering wheel you can see some profiles up here now most of them are intuitive so again this goes back to the loading screen um, if you're loading a game that is MAME, you know the loading screen is a MAME game you select the MAME profile right there and then you s double click on this top portion here and you can adjust the sensitivity right there now keep in mind that's going to affect all games so you cannot do this on a per game basis okay um, if you have a Sega Model 2 game, same thing, you click Sega Model 2 right there, Sega Model 3 right there. Now for Triforce, uh, there's only two Triforce games on the driving wheel, so you've got one for each game because it's just needed for those. So if you click the little arrow right here like that and you go to Properties, you can see this one affects F0 right here. I made a description, I put F0. And if you do it to this one, you can see that this one affects Mario Kart. And then finally, you've got Naomi and uh, Thomas Wave. And those are run by the Demule emulator. So just keep in mind that Demule is for Naomi and a Thomas Wave. So you would, again, adjust the sensitivity there, hit OK. And then you can close out of this uh, software. So that's another way you can tweak sensitivity. And finally, you can do it in MAME in the same menu we, we uh, uh, do the inputs. Uh, and again, because of that, you have to make sure that this one is not in read-only prior to making this change. But what you would do is you would go into, you know, the game and you would go to the same tab menu. And then you would go to analog controls. And here you can see that you've got a gas pedal uh, you got a brake pedal sensitivity, you got a gas pedal sensitivity, and you've got a steering wheel sensitivity. You ignore all these other ones, digital speed, all that stuff. You ignore it because we're not dealing with digital here. So you only concern yourself with brake pedal sensitivity, uh, gas pedal sensitivity, and steering wheel sensitivity. You can change that up and down as much as you like. And as long as that other file is not set to read only, those changes are going to save. So those are three ways you can go about doing that. And that's going to be pretty much it, guys. So real quick, I'm just going to go real quickly from beginning to end on what to do uh, with the steering wheel. So basically, you know, the first time you plug it in, you know, go through the process that I talked about earlier. That's just going to be the first initial time that you plug it in, right? So you plug it in, it's going to spin, you go to the toolkit, you start up, you know, you do start driving, uh, software is going to pop up, you're going to get a, a prompt to reboot, you reboot, you come back. You do this toolkit again, start driving one more time, then you're good to go. After that, every single time you plug in the, the steering wheel, all you're doing is you're plugging it in, you're going over to the toolkit, start driving, you're going to see it spins left, right, the software pops up, it goes away. At that point, you're good to go. You're good to play games. Um, so that it's as simple as that. I just went into a lot of detail in here because I want you guys to be aware of some of the things going on behind the scenes and how to change things if you so wish. Um, and other than that, the only thing to know is just keep the steering wheel unplugged unless you're using it. You know, If you're playing other regular games, just keep it unplugged and uh, that way it doesn't interfere with anything else. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will catch you guys on the next one.